Hi everybody, John Meyer here and welcome to number five of this totally unscripted podcast series at Jeff Barr's house, joined with Corey Quinn and his son, Stephen Barr. You're not going to want to miss this. And if you haven't watched the other ones, go back now because I keep recapping everything and it gets to be a lot. Check out the other ones, but I made them in some short, quick, easy, digestible series, 15 minutes long. Right afterwards, we're having pizza more than a two-party team at jeff's house but that is not going to make any of this because it's just for us now in this video we're talking about s3 object storage and how long it's going to be around is it going to be around longer than us i guess we'll never know because it's continuously there and maybe who is paying your aws bill after you leave hmm don't forget to check out those credit cards Jeff's 2013 AWS road trip when he went all around the states and kind of found out a lot of information and presented cloud in general. How Jeff and I became friends. That bold ask in 2019 in Seattle at his favorite coffee shop. Really how we become friends over the time and got a chance to actually make this podcast at his house. It's pretty cool. How Jeff, Corey, and I actually got started back in 2020 doing a webinar series when everything was shut down, we got together virtually and put on some stuff. And it really kind of sets the stage on how I got into podcasting and content creating. Now, afterwards, we're gonna be talking about the full video production that AWS goes through with Jeff for bringing in people to like things like, you know, how is this architected? All right, how about we dive into video number five of this totally unscripted series? Let's get started. Yeah, my five-year-old saw a warning sign about coyotes in a nature walk park, and like now she sees coyotes around every corner. Like coyote, and it's like that's a German Shepherd coyote, <laughs> and that's a miniature poodle. Like good luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but this this long-lasting stuff is going to be a really interesting challenge for industry. Yeah. Like there, there will be S3 objects that are hundreds of years old at some point. There has to be. Data centers so. don't live that long. At some point, like the the power supply gives out, and all right. Yeah, well, but all this stuff has been shifted stand. around many yeah, times. This stuff oh, is yeah. so it's so divorced from the physical hardware in some cases. It's, it's also the question, like, we're looking at it from a longevity perspective. 200 years from now, 300 years from now, who's been paying the bill for these things mm -hmm. on some level, like, the personal accounts? Like, uh, that's the thing that's always been a little unclear is like someone dies, goes to probate or whatnot, their credit yeah. cards stop working. I've never heard of a story yet, and I've been looking, mm -hmm. where my credit card expired, I didn't notice it, and then AWS turned my site off and deleted all of my data. I have been looking for those stories, and I cannot Ooh. find them. Which There's going to be a are, policy and a process, but there I must don't be. know what it is. I don't think it actually oh. goes into the forks. I think it just keeps going on where the... It's, depending it on the dollar, the I think they yes. cut off your access. It, yeah, they might go off access. access. They cut off the access, is, yeah. but they'll never delete it. I, I can almost guarantee that it won't delete it. It'll still be running. <laughs> I mean, why would they... Yeah. It doesn't make sense to delete Especially it. the deep archive pricing at, what is it, $1,000 per petabyte? Yeah. Like, great. We're, okay, it's a 12-hour retrieval time. Like, I haven't paid my bill in six years, but I want it back now. <laughs> yeah. gonna, okay, you're going to have to wait a day. Yeah. Uh, yeah but I haven't I, I haven't encountered it in a while. Hmm. Interesting. I'm, I'm sure the situation has come up. I've, I've had others come yeah. up that was... I bet I've never had a client that decided, you know what? I'm just not going to pay the bill because that's how we're going to opt them. I'm like, that is not the way to go. Yeah. 2013, I did an AWS road trip, which mm. is, I think I'd always want to do. And I, I, after a lot of planning, I flew to Boston, I rented an SUV, and I had user group talks in 15 different cities. And I did three weeks and I drove 5,500 miles. It was super, super awesome. One of those stops, I think, was Lexington, Kentucky where no tech folks would ever bother to visit a user group in Lexington, Kentucky. So first you like you get there, and before you've even done a thing, it's like, it's so awesome you're here. It's like, wait, wait, they're literally just showing up. They think yeah. it's the most cool thing ever. At some point after my talk there, I talked to these two guys in the parking lot who'd said they'd actually driven from a different state to come and hear me talk because they were so excited about AWS. And I, I, I vaguely remember that talk. Earlier this year, I get a Slack message, and he's like, Jeff, you don't remember me, but I was one of those two guys that you talked to after the talk, and I'm now one of your AWS colleagues. Mm. Like, that was like that little inflection point of, hey, cloud's a, a big thing, I'm going to study it, learn it. 
And it's like, but that's the kind of thing that happens all the time in this job, where you like light people's brain up a bit, and then years later, like, hey, thanks for lighting up my brain. Like, it yeah. made a huge difference. I'd like to share real quick, uh, and this speaks to Jeff's character. When, so when I started at AWS 2013, 2012, 2013, and I actually like got a full-time job in 2015, so reading Jeff's blogs, and that's how I learned all the services, that's how I was doing things, yeah. and I was like, hey, this step by step, oh, that's pretty cool. When I joined AWS in 2019, it was July, and I first came out to Seattle in August, I sent Jeff a message, hey Jeff, been a long-time fan of yours, so I wonder if you have 15 minutes, like, this was one of those bold or go home type <laughs> things. So like, we 15 minutes, grab a cup of coffee, whatever it is. Uh, Keldrick messaged me back. Well, you messaged me and said, hey, Keldrick, we'll set things up, whatever. We'll grab some coffee tomorrow. I'm like, <laughs> crap. So I met Jeff at the, in the building. We walked over to his favorite coffee shop, Del Tante's. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, which unfortunately closed. Yeah, but, yeah, unfortunately. I know I walked past it tw twice now. Here I thought it was product placement. Continue. Yeah, <laughs> there was just some nice chocolate coffee, by the way. Yeah. Mm. Really good. And we sat down. We had a 15-minute conversation. And from that moment on, it was like, uh, it, that's how Jeff and I kind of like, you know, it started. Yeah. He took that moment. He, he He's been mentoring me since. Like, that's like a... That is a so moment. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Actually, oh, you want to talk about... So for, we'll get on to that topic in a second. But since then, it's been like, that will always be ingrained in me. And like, Jeff took that moment... 15 minutes was a huge deal yeah. to me. I mean, the guy's busy doing everything else mm -hmm. and speaking for the company, and he had time to grab coffee. Okay, so I think you have to always reward bold requests. Like, when someone, like, does something that's out of the ordinary, the, to keep the universe in proper balance, you always have to say yes to those bold requests is part of the way I think about it. Um, but you need to ask Carmen tonight how she managed to get from Peru to the U.S. when she was 16 years old. And she is the master of asking for the impossible and having and her happen. Tell me that, yeah. So have her tell you, like, directly. It's okay. the, she's never, like, written down the whole thing and shared it. And every time I hear her tell it, one more detail pops out that I'm like, oh, I didn't know that part also happened. But, like, to... Be 16 years old and have your parents not even believe that you want to do this. Right. To then like talk your way through the embassy and to have your uncle help you out and to fly here in a six passenger private plane is like, there was a lot of boldness there. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's that's pretty bold. I'll I'll take a good lesson from that. Well, I first of all, I, I got to tell you, I appreciate it and I uh, appreciate the, like our friendship since then. Like we have. Everywhere I go, wherever it is, I'll, you know, occasionally message you or that. And especially having us here at your house, uh, it means a lot. It's not his fault for what I do now. It's actually both of your faults for what I do now. Uh -oh. This is both of your faults. I don't know sure how you guys remember how the, all this got started. Jeff and I would occasionally talk while I was at AWS. I met you at SKO for AWS in 2020 yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, in a bar, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, it was funny. And uh, so you were doing. I didn't realize you were doing a talk. I was following you on Twitter. Uh, the pandemic hit, and I w on Twitter I said, "Hey, Corey, I'm thinking of a webinar or something to do. Are you in? Are you game?" And you said, "Yes, let's do it." Yeah. First of all, I'm like, "Crap." Okay. Then Jeff goes on to the tweet and says, "I'm in too." <laughs> I, I can tell you right now, I immediately <laughs> dropped everything I was doing. I probably ran around the house. Google how to do a webinar. <laughs> <laughs> I had no clue. I actually reached out to my boss and I'm like, dude, what, what do I do here? I've got, I've got this, this on it. And they're like, well, first you need to submit a ticket. All right. All right. Uh, That's you know, a big company story. Right? Yeah. Right. I'll submit a ticket. I need a webinar. How do I host a webinar? I need WebEx. What do I do? It was all over the place trying to figure it out. Thankfully, there were some nice people inside who back channeled me to get some of this stuff done, of like a webinar WebEx. Normally, they have to go through a whole process of getting it and set up the registration page. And, uh, that was and we, fun. Oh, yeah. so we did three of those. Uh, the first, the first one was just it's okay. Basically, all of us were just like it's all right to feel what you're feeling in this situation. Yeah. Uh, second and third one and then from there that's how I started doing my podcast and I am Tomorrow I'm actually releasing one with Adrian Cockcroft awesome. that he was on for episode 
113. Hmm. So it is, I got to thank you guys for, I don't know who I am. It, it started out, I never thought I would enjoy hosting and recording and all the content, but. It's amazing because you have to borrow smart people's brains for an hour. And that is just, that, that's what I yeah. love about it. I, I'm, for somehow, I got really good at hosting and the energy, bringing into it, and keeping the conversation going. And, and that's actually a hard skill. Uh, uh, interviewing mm -hmm. is harder than being interviewed because yes. at any point when your guest stops talking, you have to have the next question ready that is totally relevant to what they just finished saying. Yes. And be able to handle it if they don't stop talking. <laughs> the other problem is yeah. people get nervous and ramble. Oh, and it's how do you regain... In, in years past, we used to do interviews in a studio. Like, even before Oscar, we used to, like, set up a room and do interviews. And we had a, a producer and a whole video crew would come in and there'd be three cameras and, you know, lights and sound and a background and all this really complicated stuff. And, a, like, a person with a clipboard, like, running through all the... The, the, the plans and the, the, the clapper guy and all that stuff and we'd bring in a guest and they would be so intimidated. They would, they would like look at, they, they'd say, oh my gosh, this is like, they, they thought it was going to be like an iPhone on a tripod and suddenly it's an actual studio and they realized, okay, all the cameras, all the lights and all the eyeballs are now all looking like literally focused directly on me and people would actually panic and freeze up and like they would like look at the room. I, I, I don't know if I can actually do that. And we had to start sending them pictures ahead of time, like actually mentally prep and say, this is the scene that you're going to be going into. And then have like an actual little green room and some refreshments and kind of yeah. like ease them into like, this is the, this is the strenuous yeah. situation cameras, you're about to. Talk yeah. to me. Yeah. What are you up to? Well, what are you okay, that was the yeah. thing. Yeah. And it's hard to get that out of Oh, me. yeah, it is. Well, I saw this great interview with, uh, with, with Mr. Beast, and he was saying, you know, they give these $10,000 prizes to people and they don't react the way one would expect because they are just kind of overwhelmed by the setting and yeah. a lot of his work in selecting guests is people who would be comfortable enough in front of a camera that no. when they do these outrageous things that they can yeah. have enough emotional control to react well in real time. We, we generally we had, had better a conversations headlines. in the green room and it was like we should have just recorded that. Uh, that would have been a lot better. When you're off recording that's yeah. actually some of the things that happen. Yeah. So what I do is immediately when somebody joins a call I hit record. Don't worry, I'm just recording and just and prep. And a lot of the highlights and everything that we get are the pre-stuff that people don't realize. Mm -hmm. They start to get that natural. It's much better. It is. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Just a little extra for the video. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I click record. People? Even in the prep one, like the, I'll do a 30-minute prep, and I'll click record or something. I was like, hey, don't worry about it. If we were actually doing the podcast, we're doing it right now. And this is what the conversation would be. And they're so relaxed at it that when we go into it, it's just a conversation. They, they know that it's just going to start flowing. Getting them relaxed is a big part of it. it we, we were I had some friends over, at, uh, over the weekend, and the, the husband is an aerospace engineer. And the, the wife was at some party, and she saw Bill Gates. And she wanted to tell Bill about something that he, her husband had invented. And she's like super, super nervous. And she finally steals herself to go up to talk to Bill. And all she can say is, Man, drone, big. And, and she's like, oh my gosh. And Bill's like, okay, calm down, calm down. Like, let, let's yeah. figure out what you're actually talking about here. And, but that, that does happen. You know, people like build up like how strenuous it's going to be. And I, I try really hard not to actually come across as intimidating just because I know that sometimes people are going to like come up and reinvent and they're going to be, oh my gosh, so I'm going to finally get to say hi to Jeff. Like, oh, okay, I'm just. I yeah. will try as hard as possible to be a normal person and not somehow be like larger than life. Yeah. I mean, Stephen, you work in the space and you hear these stories, I imagine, a fair bit because he's a legend oh, yeah. in the space. But to you, he's dad. Yes. How do you square that circle? That's, that's, that's actually really. That's, that's, I've got that question a lot, Rian. People are like, what is it like having a celebrity dad? <laughs> I, I, I just said, well, we don't call them that at home, for yeah. one. Yeah. Well, I was telling this to Wait, that's an insurance commercial. Yeah. 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 It is. Well, I was telling this just to my, Thanks, to, to my daughter and his, his granddaughter. I just know these people who like, treat your grandpa like they get starstruck and they get nervous. And she just giggles like, really? And, you know, I think, I, I just say, well, there's no, um, you don't have like a public and private persona that's, vastly different yeah and so whatever you see that's what it is 
Um, and that's th- with the expectations that I give people. Yes, he has, actually is that productive. He actually is that genuine. There's no, like, secret persona where there's all this other stuff that you're not seeing. He's mm-hmm. the most transparent person you could possibly exactly. have. Um, and that's how I put Yeah, I, I, especially in Seattle. Seattle's a very small town, and Carmen and I go out all the time. We, we often, it gets to be 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. We just walk down the hill and, like, go have dinner and go to all kinds of different events. And... You often run into people that either you know them through work or like they've met you somewhere or like, oh, that must be Jeff, let's go talk to him. And you just say, you know, I need to just be the same person all the time. And for better or for worse, I'm not going to like... And you, you kind of think, you know, you're kind of on duty 24-7, but you like, I'll, I'll just be the same decent person all the time if I yeah. possibly can. And like, okay, far, camera's far off, time to go mouth off and yell at uh, the toddler. It how, doesn't work that How tough. many people have burned their entire, like, career by doing that? And, yeah. like, they're, they look so nice on camera, and then they're, like, an actual, like, jerk in person. It's like... It's too tiring to be too different. It, no. it used to be where, when you would go in the office, you'd have your work persona, your home persona. Yeah. And I think something that's helped during the whole work from home and the pandemic is everybody can be themselves. Yeah. Right? Now you are who you are, wherever you're at, and it has released a lot of stress for people to worry about. I think so. There's also this very weird perception that, like, when you get to be well known, that your life changes in some fundamental way. And you said, like, trash out. I, I, every morning, I walk the dog, I empty the dishwasher, I get the trash out, I get the recycle out, I vacuumed the house this morning before you all showed up. I do, like, but there's a robot for that. No, it's not, no, no, it's not no, no, I, I do regular normal person stuff, and like there's this expectation that somehow like a staff just shows up and magically does all the stuff for you, and like it's, nah, it's it doesn't work that way. It's the right level of celebrity, like you go to reInvent or something, and mm-hmm. everyone knows who you are, but you can still go to the grocery store yeah. without having to worry about paparazzi cropping up. Not paparazzi, yeah. but I, I have run into, into I, right before um, reInvent, I did run into two of our colleagues from China, like in the parking lot of the grocery store. And mm. they were like, oh, it's Jeff, it's Jeff, it's Jeff. And so, it, but it's the right level of, okay, that's cool. It's not like, I, I've only had to deal with one stalker, so I guess that's mm. pretty decent. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a safety number margin there. Yeesh, yeah. I, mm. Okay, I hope you liked video number five of this series. We got two more happening and they just keep getting better and better as the conversation gets deeper and deeper. In video number six, we're gonna be talking about fireside chats with Jeff and Steven, AWS Deep Racer live streaming from Oscar during reInvent when everything was shut down, the first Evo races that happened and Jeff Barr as the track boss. Also, how much it takes out of you to be the host of any event and how much effort that you put into it. You always have to be on your toes. How do you arrange your podcast, Jeff? How do you arrange your posts? We're going to find out more. And here's an interesting and hot topic. How was Jeff's color picked and decided upon for his new office and studio setup? Well, it has something to do with Legos. And the cool part is we find out how many patents Jeff has through AWS. Stay tuned for video number six of this seven-part series. And until then, stick around for it.